Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. In part one of this special report, we talked about how the Justice Department's China initiative helped reveal a series of espionage crimes quietly driven by Beijing. That's as it seeks to catch up to the United States and the West and get an edge in the global technology race. But stolen trade secrets aren't the only things the DOJ uncovered. It also dug out other threats that were previously undisclosed. Among them, Beijing's methods for trying to shape American public opinion and how the Chinese regime is siphoning away American technology in a perfectly open and legal manner. It led to a significant increase in disclosures of uh, previously covert Chinese influence efforts inside the United States. One example is how Beijing tries to use the media to shape public opinion in America. Following the initiative's launch, the DOJ ordered two Chinese state-run media outlets operating in the U.S. to register as foreign agents. Those outlets are Xinhua News Agency and CGTN America. Their registration revealed a significant discovery that Beijing-backed foreign agents spent over $60 million in 2020, all to influence U.S. public opinion. That's more than any other foreign government. Over 80 percent of that spending came from CGT in America. The TV station broadcasts in English and also has a business address in Washington, D.C. But it quietly operates as something else, too, the overseas arm of a Chinese state-controlled media outlet. CGTN spent more than $50 million on news programming that comes from a perspective that is not Western-centric. The China initiative also allowed the DOJ to work with America's top telecom regulator, the FCC. Allowing the government to, um, to block acquisitions of, of U.S. telecommunications uh, companies by foreign adversaries, including China. The FCC later revoked broadcast licenses from three Chinese telecom companies, banning them from operating in the U.S. Those three are China Telecom, China Unicom and China Mobile. The FCC says these companies are controlled by the Chinese regime. So allowing them to operate in the country could allow Beijing to spy on and disrupt U.S. telecommunications. On top of telecommunications, Ellis says the China initiative also led to a more robust review of foreign investment coming into the U.S. It led to strengthened reviews by CFIUS, the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States. CFIUS is a federal body that reviews foreign investment deals that could threaten America's national security. Really taking much more seriously the threat of Chinese direct investment in the United States and its ability to uh, control uh, key parts of U.S. critical infrastructure. In 2020, a Chinese private equity firm was looking to strike a deal, a merger with a U.S. semiconductor manufacturer. The American company produces semiconductors, more commonly known as microchips. The technology is critical to building advanced military weapons, on top of being the brain of your iPhone and possibly your car. After the deal caught the Foreign Investment Committee's attention, both companies gave up on pushing it through. But behind this case is a bigger picture, that on top of cyber attacks and physical theft, Beijing has been acquiring American technology through investment. Since the U.S. market is an open economy, it's perfectly legal for other countries to buy or gain controlling stakes in emerging technology firms. And China has been doing just that. The effort has been helped along by robust financial backing, a multi-billion dollar state-controlled fund. The Chinese Communist Party also has a checklist of technology it wants to get a hold of. On it, artificial intelligence, advanced materials, and high-powered computing. The same technology the U.S. military is interested in. That next-generation tech will prove critical for future warfare. And whoever gets hold of it first has a better chance of winning wars in the future. With that goal in mind, the U.S. high-tech sector has been seeing increasing investment from China. Here are some numbers to put it into perspective. 
Since 2012, China-based investors poured almost $20 billion into America's high-tech sector. That amounts to over 600 deals across different areas. But the bulk of the money targeted artificial intelligence, virtual reality and robotics. The U.S. is more ahead than others in developing these emerging technologies. And that tech superiority is a big reason for America's military dominance in the battlefield. The problem is, if no actions are taken to prevent Beijing from getting that know-how, then over time, the U.S. not only could lose its dominance, but at the same time help Beijing get ahead. And there's another problem. Many of these critical kinds of technology are being developed outside traditional military agencies and commercial firms and universities. And U.S. higher education is proven relatively vulnerable to intelligence efforts. Traditionally, schools aren't considered espionage targets. And U.S. counterintelligence has focused on protecting military and intelligence secrets instead of civilian science research. But Beijing has its eye on it. China pays scientists at American universities to secretly bring our knowledge and innovation back to China, including valuable federally funded research. To put it bluntly, this means American taxpayers are effectively footing the bill for China's own technological development. Ray says Beijing then leverages those gains to undercut American research institutions and companies. Blunting our nation's advancement and costing American jobs. And we're seeing more and more of these cases. He gave one example, former Emory University professor Xiao Jiang Li. Our investigation found that while Li was researching Huntington's disease at Emory, he was also pocketing a half a million unreported dollars from China. In 2011, while doing research at Emory University in Georgia, Li joined Beijing's talent recruitment initiative called the Thousand Talents Program. It placed him in jobs at two Chinese universities doing similar research. And while he made half a million dollars from those jobs in China, he never reported the extra paychecks on his income tax returns. Li was convicted and sentenced for filing a false tax return. Another example is Charles Lieber, former chair of Harvard's chemistry department. The United States has alleged that Lieber concealed from both Harvard and the NIH his position as a strategic scientist at a Chinese university. And the fact that the Chinese government was paying him through the Wuhan Institute of Technology, a $50,000 monthly stipend, more than $150,000 in living expenses, and more than $1.5 million to establish a laboratory back in China. Dr. Lieber was convicted last year of uh, intentionally failing to disclose and misleading the FBI about um, uh, about funding he was receiving from the Chinese government as part of their talent recruitment programs. Both convicted professors have one thing in common. They joined China's Thousand Talents program. So China's Thousand Talents plan is a, um, a comprehensive effort on the part of the Chinese government to, um, to, to leapfrog the United States in advanced technology. Beijing launched the project in 2008. Through it, the Chinese government tries to entice scientists to secretly bring our knowledge and innovation back to China even if that means stealing proprietary information or violating our export controls and conflict of interest rules. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We are now sharing a shortened version of our program on YouTube. That's after being demonetized for a year. Full episodes can be watched on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up for a 14-day free trial, please click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer, and see you tomorrow. Every once in a while, something comes along so masterful, it leaves you in awe. So inspiring, it changes your life. So beautiful you wish it would never end. When that happens, it's something not to be missed. Shen Yun, an all new production every year.
The performance was enchanting. I feel better about the world. I feel uplifted. It touches you. It really does. The expertise of the dancers was really, really strong. To know that it was live music was really fantastic. We didn't want to miss this. Make sure you see it. Have to come. Life-changing.